Hello and welcome back to another math lesson. We're going to go ahead and get started with our number talk and we are focusing on the problem 8 plus 16. Can we make a 10? Well, I know that I can make a 10 out of that 8 if I take 2 from that 16 and make that be 14. Add the 2 to the 8 to make 10. 10 plus 14 is 24. Can I make a 20? Take a look. Could I make a 20? Yeah, I could. I could take 4 from that 8 and add that 4 to the 16 to make that be 20. And I could get 24. Because I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, hmm, what makes 16? 8 plus 8 makes 16. So I could do some repeated addition. Repeated addition means I'm adding the same number over and over again. Well, if I add 8 three times, 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 8 more is going to be 24. Good job. So we're going to get started with our lesson. And our focus of our lesson is going to be on bar graphs. But actually, some of our mental math, we're going to get started with, and it's kind of like our number talk. Well, what can I do to get this number? What could I do to get that answer? Well, when I look at 8 plus 6, and I know we've worked with this one before, all right? If I move 2 to the 8 to make 10, okay? and then add what's left over is 4, that's going to be 14. And I've got 15 minus 7. Well, if I think of an easier fact that I could do, like 14 minus 7, so 14 minus 7 is 7, but 15 is one more, so that answer has to be 8. Let's try this page. I've got 7 plus 9. Okay. Well, I know that 7 plus 10 is 17. So 1 less, because 9 is 1 less than 10, is going to have to be 16. Here I have 9 minus 4. Well, I know that 10 minus 4 is 6. So 9 minus 4 is 1 less, so that's going to have to be 5. All right, very quickly, one more. 6 plus 7. Well, I know that 6 plus 6 equals 12, plus 1 more is 13. And 4 plus 9. I know that 4 plus 10 is 14 minus 1 because that's 9 and 9 is 1 less than 10. That's going to be 13. All right, on to bar graphs. So this page just says read about bar graphs on, in your student reference book, which you don't have, but I have it right here. So I need you to track with your eyes while I read this aloud, and it says, a bar graph is a drawing that uses bars to represent data. Bar graphs can help you answer questions about the data. The example below is a scaled bar graph. The scale shows intervals of two. So when they're talking about the scale of a bar graph, it's usually along this line here, and this bar graph is going by two, so zero, two, four, six, eight. Not all bar graphs go by two. Some might go by one, some might go by five, some might go by tens. It all depends on what data you're collecting and how you want to present it. All bar graphs do have titles. They must have a title. The title of this bar graph is Favorite Foods of the Class. So the height over here of each bar shows how many children chose that food. And then the labels down here are what the foods are. So tacos, pizza, hamburgers, and spaghetti. We can use the data in the bar graph to help us answer these questions. Well, how many children chose 
pizza. So when I go up here to pizza, it goes, oh wait, it doesn't end at six and it doesn't go all the way to eight. It's in the middle. So I go back over to my scale and I think six to eight. Well, what's right in the middle of six and eight? It would be seven. So seven children chose pizza. How many more children chose tacos than spaghetti? So this is kind of like a two-part thing. First, I need to find out how many like tacos. Then I need to find out how many like spaghetti. And then I need to decide how many more like tacos than spaghetti. So I'm going to go right on over here to tacos, go all the way up, and it ends at eight. So eight children like tacos. Here's spaghetti. It goes past the two, but not all the way to the four. four. So what's in the middle? It's three. Well, eight and three are not the answer to my question. My question is how many more like tacos than spaghetti? So eight and three, I could make that be a subtraction problem. Eight minus three is five. So five more children liked tacos than spaghetti. And here's another one. So this bar graph has some data that goes with it. So what the boys and girls needed to find out was how many children could do how many pull-ups, whether they're at recess or gym class. So they made a data chart and they made tally. So this is a tally chart. What did they want to find out? The number of pull-ups. So they could either do zero, one, two, three, four, five, or maybe someone could do six pull-ups. Over here, these are the number of children that did that particular number of pull-ups. So how many children did zero pull-ups? Six did. Now how did I know that was six right away? Well, when you're making tallies and you have five, this is five. I don't need to count each one of those individually. When it looks like this, I just automatically can say five and then keep adding on. So how many children did zero pull-ups? Five, six. How many did one pull-up? Five did. Four children could do two pull-ups. Two children could do three pull-ups. No children did four pull-ups. Three did five pull-ups and one super kid did six pull-ups pretty strong. He eats his Wheaties for breakfast. So then you can take this information in the tally chart and make it be a bar graph. Here's our title, pull-ups by third graders. Here are the number of children in our scale here. Our scale goes from one to six, or zero to six, I'm sorry. But we're counting by ones this time. We're not counting by twos like the other one. So this is going zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And here are the number of pull-ups that each child did. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is telling me that six children did zero pull-ups. One or five children did one pull-up. Four children did two pull-ups. Two children did three pull-ups. One children, excuse me, four children did, no one did four pull-ups, and three children did five pull-ups, and one child did six pull-ups, okay? So we are going to work on our own bar graph, okay? I'm going to ask you to put the video on pause. And then when we come back, I'm going to have some data filled in. And we'll use that data to make a bar graph. Okay, we're back. What I did is I just wrote down all my brothers and sisters' names. And then I counted how many letters were in their name and how many of each of my brothers and sisters had that many numbers of letters in their name. So the title of our bar graph is first names. Number of children, our scale, I just went zero through nine, and the number of letters and names, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna take the information from our tally chart right here to help make our bar graph. So how many children had three letters in their name? 
2. So I would go like this. How many had four letters in their name? Four children did, so I'll go all the way up to the four. How many had five? Just one. How many of my brothers or sisters had six letters? None. How many had seven letters? Two did. Okay, and then you could shade these in really neat. I'm just gonna do one. Not really neat, just so you can see what it would look like. Okay, so that is an example of a bar graph. What you can do, if we get to the next page, okay, um, here we go. This is an activity that you can do with your family. Um, decide on a topic. You could talk about their favorite ice cream flavors or their favorite pet or their favorite sport, favorite fruit. There's so many choices. So then you can make a tally chart with your choices and you can ask your family members what is their favorite and then you can use, you could print this off or you could draw one yourself. You don't have to print it off. You could put this in your math notebook. Make sure you have a title, favorite ice cream, favorite pet, favorite sport. Down on this side would be number of people. And this would be whatever your topic is. Um, ice cream flavors, and then you could put vanilla, strawberry, peanut butter, chocolate fudge, um, chocolate mint, chocolate chip, cookie dough, all kinds of choices. And then you just make your bar graph. You find out how many people like vanilla ice cream, how many people like basketball, if, it, if your topic is sports. Then when, if you get this finished in your notebook, or if you print it off here, take a picture of it and send it to me in an email, and we'll take a peek at it. Okay? Um, when you get back to the classroom page, you can see that it says lesson six activities make sure you click on that because there's some extra things for you to work on okay have a good day bye bye